Now, when solving multiple problems in the spreadsheet, it's really important to make sure you keep your names uh, straight. The names from the previous sheet will carry over, um, but if you redefine them on the local sheet, then that will take the precedence. So uh, you can always tell if you see the uh, color coding of the symbols after you have defined them and used them. Okay, so this is going to be the same as P2, and we see it highlights the uh, color codes and highlights the cell above it, so we know that's working properly, and this is equal to P4. Okay, now uh, this will be equal to P1, but right now it's equal to zero. Uh, so let's see what we do now. I think he told us that the T3 was 550 degrees C, and T5 uh, is equal to 450 degrees C. Let me double check that before we move too far. Yep, that seems to be right. And the flow rate through this system, that's an important piece of given information. It's 7.7 .7 kilograms per second. Okay, and the other thing that he gave us is that the isentropic efficiency for the turbine is 85% and the isentropic efficiency for the pump is 90%. Okay, so all that's given information as well. Okay, so now what do we do with it? Well, we need to, um, I guess we can go ahead and, and try to deal with this tough question first. That is, what is the condenser pressure? How in the heck are we going to find that? Well, we do know this inlet state uh, going into the second stage of the turbine. We know the pressure, we know the temperature, so we can find that state. We can find the state 6S from the isentropic expansion. So we can find the, that, that state. We also know the adiabatic efficiency, excuse me, the isentropic efficiency of the turbine. So that means that we can calculate the actual work output of the turbine second stage. And because we know the inlet enthalpy and we know how much work is done by the actual turbine stage, we can then find the exit state, the actual exit state, H6. And then we have to play the game that he asks us to play to find the pressure of the condenser such that state 6 with 5% moisture it, it, it has exactly 5% moisture with, with the required enthalpy. Let's see if we can kind of go through that chain of thought that I've thrown out there. So uh, let's find state, find the condenser pressure. So first we're going to analyze the isentropic, the ideal All right, so first we need to know uh, the condition going in, that's H5. And we can find that because we know uh, the pressure and the temperature. And the pressure is P5, and the temperature is T5. So that's going to be... Uh, we also need to know that entropy. Why do we need to know the entropy? Well, we're going to use the isentropic expansion to find that ideal exit state. So um, S6S is going to equal to S5. Now here's the case that I was just talking about is that 
Uh, S5 is not defined in the current worksheet, but I had used it in a previous problem. So it's showing me that there's a value for S5 that it's going to find, but it's not color coded and it's not showing a link to the existing cell. So Excel is telling me, you know, that hey, this is actually referring back to a different, different sheet. So I'm going to go ahead and type this, but I need to correct it by uh, applying the name manager to the new cell. And now we see that S5 uh, can, uh, refers to the previous value, the one that we want to use. Okay, and this is um, again uh, for isentropic and this is just the reference expansion, the ideal expansion, not the actual one. So now we can find the state uh, 6s because this is going to be given by the enthalpy as a function of the pressure and entropy and that pressure is P6 and the entropy is S6S. Hmm, we've got some kind of a problem here. What is it? Let's just proceed ahead and see uh, what happens. Instead of taking zero for P6, I'm going to, uh, for now, uh, remember we said this is to be determined, I'm going to put in, um, um, so not to be too close to the answer, 15 kPa. Of course, the answer is given in the book, and that maybe makes it a little easier for you to work it out if you know the answer, but I'm going to maybe try to work with the idea that we, we don't know what that is. But we do know that those condenser pressures are the same. And then we need to find out what those are. So let's go ahead and, and put this together and, and see what, what we've got to do. Um, all right, very good. So that would be the ideal uh, expansion. In this case, uh, work from 5 to 6s would just be given by H5 minus H6S. And all these names need to be created in the current sheet. And using the isentropic efficiency, we can find I guess we call it 6A just to be uh, certain it was different. This is going to be W5 to 6 times the isentropic efficiency of the turbine. Okay, and finally, what we need to do is find out what is the resulting value of H6A. Well, that's going to be from the first law for the actual turbine. We can find out that uh, this is going to be H5 minus W5 to 6A. Yep, uh, see, he thinks I'm talking about cell H5, which is zero. <laughs> this is H, H5. There we go. All right, so here's the deal. Let's try this. This is, uh, we, we need to find the pressure one, which is equal to the pressure six. Pressure 1 is equal to pressure 6, which is equal to pressure 6A. We need to find that pressure so that when we calculate the enthalpy of the steam exiting the turbine using 95% quality, that that value is the same as 
this value. All right, so that's it's kind of a moving target because as we change uh, the value of the pr condenser pressure, then um, then this number is going to change, and, and we can show that. I mean, I don't know. Memorize this number: twenty-five, eleven point eighty-five. If this is equal to ten kPa, then that number is twenty-four sixty-six sixteen. So as we change this pressure then this number is going to change. But what we want to do is I'm going to call it H6 desired and we want that to be equal to H as a function of the pressure and the quality the pressure has got to be equal to P6 and the quality has got to be X desired I'll call it. Well X desired we don't know what that is I should have given that up here in the problem statement which I'll do now X desired 95 percent so this is the minimum quality at the turbine exit. And that's given. Okay, so this is a lot simpler with the add ins uh, than it would be by trying to solve this by hand. But here, the basic idea is to manipulate the pressure. Um, Let's do it this way. I'm going to call this P guess and I'm going to make this equal to 15. This way we can keep it all in front of us. And then what I'm going to do is uh, let this equal to P guess. And I could come up here and, and, and change it, but this way it's easier just to change it here and you can see the numbers change. But um, so. Yeah, you can do this in Excel by the search and destroy method, just by going through here and trying to find find the value. Uh, and again, the value is given in the textbook. You know, uh, is the answer. So you, you can always kind of rely on that. And and that's what we can do here. As he said it was 9.73, and, and sure enough, when we have 9.73 there. The value we get from expanding through the turbine is the same as the value we get calculating with 95% quality. So um, that works out. But in Excel, we can do that a little bit uh, differently. Uh, we can say that we have a, a, a that we want to set this equal to zero. Um, what are we going to try to set equal to zero? H6A minus H. Six desired, and since those things are undefined, uh, let's just define all of them. So uh, again, suppose we didn't know what this was. Now I had fifteen, and um, there's a tool in Excel called. Uh, let's see if I can find it. What if analysis? Goal seek, yeah. We want to set that cell to the value of zero by changing the P guess cell. So what it'll do is it'll vary that value that we call the, the changing cell until this other cell has the the value that we want. So uh, let's see what happens. I don't know. So he, he did some iterations and came back and said 9.75. Okay. And instead of it being zero, it's equal to 8.6 e to the minus six. So we're pretty close to the book answer, 9.73. We got 9.75, um, but there's a little bit of difference in the properties that we used, I'm sure. All right, so this has gone on quite a bit. I'm going to quit here. The rest of this problem, I think, is pretty straightforward, and as a matter of fact, exactly like the previous problem that we had. Uh, so I'll, I'll leave it there, and if you have questions, let me know.